Kokichi and Kamaru come dressed as each other. It would be interesting to see Komaru dressed as Kokichi. Maybe not so much for Kokichi, but it would be an interesting outfit on Komaru. I, I think it's just the scarf that's like, huh, that might be a good look. So for this one, we might actually need, um... Good day, good people. Tune in, day of year of the horizon. And your United States Aviator, welcoming you back to another fantastic and brilliant, might I say, episode of The Don Gone Rambo. Hunger Games. Ladies and gentlemen, here we have 15 districts, and I bet you're wondering, why did you need the glass for this one? This one, today is a very special day. Today is a, a strange holiday, one of these random holidays that we get every once in a while. Smart is cool. It's a celebration of Smart is Cool Day. The smartest Danganronpa characters were also kind of cool in their own right or do something cool at some point, so ladies and gentlemen, let's introduce everyone who is here today, shall we? In District 1, we have Chihiro, and Junko, District 2, we have Taka, who's more than likely a straight A student thanks to his studies, and we have Kyoko. District 3, we have, ooh, I meant to take away the freaking, uh, mm. let's just pretend she's just Saika. I'm not trying to start any beef or anything, but it's just Saika, it's just Saika, and Makoto. District 4, we have <laughs> really messed that one up. <laughs> that beef is supposed to be over. <laughs> District 4, we have Hajime and Fat Togami. Maybe just for old time's sake, we'll, we'll, we'll pretend that the beef is going this time. District 5, our light bearers, Mikan and Nagito. District 6, we have Mahiru and Kazuichi, and moving on to District 7. Komaru and Monica. District 8, Haiji, who you might not think is cool. Justifiably so. But before all sorts of terrible reveals, he was a pretty cool character. And Hiroko. In District 9, Nagisa and Taichi. In District 10, we have Kori in the house and Mew. District 11, we have Shuiji. And we have Kokichi. District 12, Kibo, as well as Samugi. And as we scroll down just a smidgen for our last three, in District 13, we have Chisa and we have Tengen. District 14, we have Seiko and we have Miss Mayo. And last, but most certainly not least, one of my favorite people in District 15, it's the man's Kizakura, with Mr. Kyoko's dad, Jin Kirigiri. And that's the lot. So tell me, of these smarties, who do you think is the smartest? Who do you think is the coolest? And give me your top three picks, who do you think is going to finish first, second, and third? And while you do that, and while I point out that your comments are important, like these, like these, not, not like, I'm not just gonna say that, I'm gonna say like this one, and like this one, and like this one. And even like that one, that's right, four of them, you didn't expect that, you didn't expect that one. I'm gonna tell you, so I can get my, 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 uh, my notes out, where did I put my notes? Oh, my notes are all the way over here, that's what I was reaching for. <laughs> we always see submissions of clothes. And you know what that means. It means that OC episodes are coming your way. And how are they going to be? Well, they will be episodes of... 37? I think? I think. It comes out pr really nicely to nice numbers of 37... Over four episodes. Four episodes of 37. Because we got a lot, we got a lot of people. Four episodes of 37. It might be... Yeah, I think that's right. That sounds about right. If it's not right, it's not right. But that's about right. And those will be starting in November, the first day. November 1st. Daylight savings time in America and maybe other parts of the world. So you can get used to the time change if you don't actually celebrate daylight savings time. Because it'll technically be an hour earlier. Yeah? Or is it an hour later? If it's four, and we're springing back an hour... It'll be an hour earlier. We're falling back. Wait. Yeah, we fall back spring forward. It'll be an hour earlier. It'll be on the first 
November, of November the 15th of November, the 29th of November, and the 13th of December, basically every two weeks. So there's a nice spread. Nice spread every two weeks on a Sunday, you get to start your week off right. With some Hunger Games and OC action. And how that'll work is we'll select 24 people. And how do we get 24 over four episodes? You get your top six. If your OC finishes in the top six, they will head to the first ever OC finale this season for the new OC Championship. Oh yes. Oh yes, it's true. And it will be a fantastic time. We'll crown our first ever official OC Champion. We have like honorary OC Champions like Sammy, like a Yumi, and like there was not an OC episode for season five. That's right. It was just a bundle, bunch of OC winners. It was a fun time for that. We will have our first ever title holder for the OCs, and it will be a fun time. I'm excited for that. I hope you guys are too. But let's, that's for the future. That's November 1st. You'll see how all that plays out. It'll be a fun time. It'll be a fun time. Who do I think is the coolest here? I won't lie. I really like Kizakura. Do I think he's the coolest here? Maybe. Maybe. Smartest here, I'm still gonna go for Tahiro. 100%. Chiro's a smarty pants, but Kizakura, I think he might be the coolest person here. But for first, second, and third, first, I gotta go with my, my homie, my singles rider die, the blue-haired boy Nagisa. He's winning this one. Second place, I'm gonna give it to Mikan. I think the, the light bearers are gonna get close. And third, we're gonna go for Kazuichi. Nagisa, Mikan, Kazuichi. That's how I got that. That's who I've got. That's that's what I got going on in my mind space. But we need one more thing, and that is these secret achievements, because those are in action. I can't put them right there. Oh, that's a shame, because there's something holding that up. Also, if I put them right there, it'd be revealed on the camera, so we would never do that. <laughs> what we have to do instead is a deep breath in, a deep breath out, because... Well, it's nice. And it's real lovely. It's nice rolling time. How many times are we re simulating this time? It is going to be a fun one, I am sure. Four. Four times, not five times again. We've had we've hit five quite a few times. But this time, we're only re simulating. Not one time. Not two times. Not three times. But Neri, to see who is not only the smartest, but also the coolest, we are re-simulating. Four. Four times. Who's coming out on top? I don't know. Do you? I don't. <laughs> but we gotta find out. And the only way to do that, as I look at these secret achievements, because a couple of them could hit. A couple of them could hit. I'm scrolling down, clicking proceed, and starting this shebang because it's the bloodbath. And as the tributes stand on their podiums, let me tell you that the horns, they do sound. I know last week they didn't. My, my horn sounders were on vacation. I would, I'd like to imagine there are Don Arapa characters who are my official horn sounders. That's what I'm gonna do for the rest of the season. I'm gonna, I'm gonna add a couple events. I'm gonna have official horn sounders and they will be the ones who are always sounding the horns. Your fateful four. There will be four horn sounders. It's gonna happen, just you wait. But sound those horns! Feels good to have you back. I'm glad you were on vacation. It sounds better than ever, I'd still I tell you what. Makoto runs away from the cornucopia. Taichi feels like someone or something. Followed him into the arena. Mikan gathers as much food as possible. Seiko, Kori, and Junko get into a fight. Junko triumphantly kills them both. Fat Togami is not in the mood for Halloween and doesn't come to the arena. That's so common. You, you have to show up or else... Gosh darn it. Nagito smashes Sayaka across the br face with a brick, but Sayaka shrugs off the blow. Oh, that's scary. 
That is terrifying. Maya trips over her own feet and breaks her neck on the way down. Maya, oh no, Kyoko gathers as much food as possible. Taka runs away from the cornucopia. Kyoko, I'm glad that you survived the bloodbath. Jeez. Sumugi runs away. With a lighter and some rope, Kokichi and Kamaru come dressed as each other. It would be interesting to see Komaru dressed as Kokichi. Maybe not so much for Kokichi, but it would be an interesting outfit on Komaru. I, I think it's just the scarf that's like, huh, that might be a good look. Monica runs away from the cornucopia, Mew and Haiji get into a scuffle over the last school bag at a clearance sale. Hiroko grabs a jar of fishing bait, while Hajime gets the fishing gear. I think Hajime is gonna have better luck. Uh, Chihiro approaches Kazuichi, Nagisa, and Tengen, and tells them that he'll be killing them all this game. Don't forget that Chihiro's the ultimate ultimate. Don't forget that. First ever ultimate ultimate. My hero. My hero begins working on a plan to overthrow Monokuma. Kizakura runs away from the uh, cornucopia, so does Chisa, and so does Shuichi. Kibo feels like something or someone or something followed him into the arena. I don't know what it could be. And Jin clutches a first aid kit and runs away as we go on to day one. Junko throws a knife into Taichi's chest, rest in peace to the boy. Kizakura breaks down and starts weeping for an unknown reason. Chisa tries to console him, that seems very candid if I'm being completely honest. Makoto somehow manages to delete Komaru, his own sister, Monika, and Hiroko from existence while saying, just Makoto. Well, it won't be just Monica, because she is gone. She is erased from existence. Nagito. Seems to be dead, but it's a lie. Togami berates Mahiru for hours. Mahiru thinks that she and Togami grew closer that day. Kibo's just watching from the side, and he's like, What? <laughs> I don't process this. Tengen and Mikan collect leaves together. Kyoko confides in Haiji Jin, and Sumugi split up a search for resources. Nagisa eats dirt. Yum. Kazuichi takes a sip of tea, but the scalding hot liquid proves too much for him, and he spits it out in Chihiro's face. Oh, Chihiro, that's gonna hurt. That's gonna hurt the pure boy. Hajime encounters a fruit bat who immediately takes a liking to him and joins his side. Mew kills Sayaka, then revives her as an undead minion. I was about to say, oh, it is absolutely okay, because we're not beefing. We're not. Kokichi breaks down and starts weeping. For an unknown reason, and Taka tries to console him, Shuichi has PTSD flashbacks to the Great Skeleton War, a war so atrocious that you don't even need to be there to have PTSD flashbacks of it. Oh, there were bones everywhere. We lost eight, though. Eight are gone. Eight souls. A true shame. And a true Claire de Lune. Four. Seiko. Cory. Fat Togami. Maya, Taichi, Komaru, Monica, Hiroko. And as we see everybody's statuses, we have, what, 15 districts? So we had 30 people and we lost 8. So we are at 22. Who, who, who? As you can see, the entire first row is in, which means the entire set from Trigger Happy Havoc remain. Goodbye Despair from the second row only lost Fat Togami. And what it feels reminiscent from last season. Ultra Despair Girls ain't doing too good. <laughs> district, um, V3. Those three districts only lost Corey, and the last, oh, all of District 14 is out, but there's still four people remaining for Don Rapa 3. If you didn't notice, there's three districts for each of the, uh, each of the cast. There's six smartest and coolest folk. But, ladies and gentlemen, I think we gotta take a step back. Take a deep breath in, and take a deep breath out, and proceed. There's still plenty of folks left. There are still 12 more until your saving grace picks, but knowing this simulator, we can get that all right now. As we click proceed, will it happen? I gotta put on my smart glasses to dictate if that may or may not happen as we proceed. At the start of night one, Nakito and Kazuichi are trapped inside of a box for the night, so they decide to use their imaginations to liven things up. Jin gets distracted, Nagisa... Mikan and Sayaka ambush Chihiro, but Chihiro is able to fend them off using only a broomstick. As I said earlier, do not doubt the ultimate, ultimate. Kizakura loses sight of where he is. Kyoko goes to the love hotel with Hajime, but somehow ends up waking up beside Mew. 
Hajime, you had a crazy night, my boy. My hero just del <laughs> delivers an intense motivational speech to Makoto and Kokichi, inspiring them to give their all in these games. Taka was too cute for this world and ascended to a different plane of existence. Taka. Taka, no. Shuichi finds a stereo and presses play to play some sick beats. Junko's trap kills Tengen, rest in peace to him. Kibo makes a makeshift bet out of fallen leaves. Samugi receives fresh fruit from her own sponsor. Haiji is attacked by demon-possessed trees but manages to escape. Chisa prays to Atua that she makes it out alive with a minimal bloodshed, of course. See, that's a smart thing to do. That's smart. But you know what's not smart at the start of day two? Makoto, who's just standing over under a falling anvil, he's like, huh, wonder if Lou's gonna hurt. Wonder if my luck will save me. It didn't. He's dead. Haiji begs for Kazuichi to kill him. He reluctantly obliges killing Haiji. Rest in peace to you. Haiji. Kazuichi got you. And I bet you're wondering, why are you pausing right now? Well, let me tell you, it's not a secret achievement. Don't get your hopes up. <laughs> Sayaka and Hajime grievously injure each other during a vicious fight. In order to survive, they have to nurse each other back to full health. Didn't you guys just have a crazy night last night? Okay. My hero ambushes Kyoko and kills her. Rest in peace to Kyoko. Sumugi plays chess with death and wins. That is shocking. I bet you're wondering. You're looking at this. I can't believe it. You're looking at this. That can't be a secret truth. Oh, it's because I took my glasses off. I must have misread. Samugi plays chess with a death and wins. There's like four variations of that where you play chess with death and you lose. So it's rare that you get this one. And beating death at chess is a secret achievement. And ladies and gentlemen, Samugi's got it. She's on her way to the singles finale. So through some feat <coughs> of luck, she has made it to both finales. Good on you, Samugi. Maybe you deserve it. Maybe you earned it. But we gotta keep going. I was waiting for that one to hit. I wasn't sure if it was going to hit because it's like, oh, it is a slim chance. <laughs> I think it only exists during the day events. Kokichi, Junko, Chisa, and Kizakura brave the local corn maze, spending hours within its twisting stalks. Shihiro camouflages himself in the bushes. Mew violently shakes a tree to knock loose some fruit. Shuichi receives a vision of himself dying brutally at the hands of Nagito and Nagisa. As he sees them approaching, he is unable to change his future in time and dies by their hands. Shuichi now. Unable to change his future. Jin confesses how much he has come to hate Mikan. Mikan says the feelings are mutual and Kibo dies from hunger. I don't know how. But apparently that robot was hungry. We lost another seven, which means it's five more. Five more until your saving grace picks. We are down to your final 15. And we lost a good set. Well, a mixed bag of seven today. I think we had, what, five goods and, and two? I don't know. Couldn't do without. But for right now, it's still a clear day loom. Four. Taka. Tengen. Makoto. Haiji, Kyoko, Shuichi, Kibo. We'll see everybody's statuses. We'll do a quick read of them because there's 15 left. District 1 completely in with Chihiro and Junko. Junko with 4 KOs. District 2 is completely out, unfortunately. Saiko remains for District 3. District, oh, I swear if Saiko wins this episode. Then I'll be okay because there's no beef. District 4, we have Hajime. District 5, we have both of our light bearers, Mikan and Nagito with one kill. Don't remember who he took out. Who did he take out? He took out Shuichi. That's right. Mahiru and Kazuichi both remain for District 6. 7 and 8 are both gone. District 9 only has Nagisa, the only person remaining from Ultra Despair Girls. District 10 has Mew. District 11 has Kokichi. District 12 has Samugi, who is now in. Thanks to... A secret achievement. District 13 has Chisa, 14 still out, and 15 completely in. We still have five more to go until you're saving Grace picks. But it's a pretty good spread that's going on right now. How are your picks doing? I don't know. Mine are one, two, three, 
all three still in. Unless I just jinxed them. In which case, that is indeed rough, buddy, but... We'll have to find out if it is rough, buddy. As we go on, and as we proceed, to... Night 2. Mew, Kazuichi, and Mikan enter a scrum debate. Whenever there's this thing that's going on, I'm always worried that it's an ambush that is either successful or unsuccessful. But it's just a scrum debate with Nagito, Nagisa, and Chisa as they argue about V3's ending. A very, a very, uh, a very hot topic if I'm being completely honest. Very, very much, I think that splits the, um, the fandom if I'm being completely honest. I enjoyed it. Jin tries to stay up. In fact, tell me how you feel about V3's ending, if you know what it is. If you don't, ignore it. Jin tries to stay up all night to catch the mastermind, but falls asleep. Kokichi, Junko, and Maihu held together in a graveyard, staying overnight on a dare. Let me tell you, don't fall asleep on those headstones. On those gravestones? They're cardboard. Kizakura and Saika huddle for warmth. Samugi gets distracted. And Chihiro tells Hajime, this is great. It's just you, me, and this brick wall that you built between us. Hajime, did you feed Chihiro a bomb? Did you? I hope not. We'll proceed to day three. As Samugi runs away from Hajime, Sayaka and Kizakura build a shelter together, but both of them have conflicting ideas on interior design. Sayaka wants it to be pretty and pink. Pop accessories, Kizakura just wants it to be a chill, a chill area. Nagisa rests in a fruit tree. Chisa makes a Danganronpa rewrite where Jin is the protagonist. That would be kind of interesting if I'm being completely honest. Mew stabs Kazuichi with a skewer, then hides the weapon in some bone on the meat. Chihiro, on the meat bone, meat on the bone. Chihiro and Junko enter a rebuttal showdown. What would they argue about? Probably... Alter Ego? Mikan, Kokichi, and Nagito get into a fight. Nagito, however, uh, however triumphantly kills them both. His fellow light bearer and Kokichi. If he wins, he could bring them both to the singles finale. And Mahiru spins so fast that she becomes a human Beyblade, but she's fine. We only lost three, and we still need two more until your saving grace fix. Let's settle down. We lost three good folks. Three people who have all held titles at some point. Maybe not singles titles. Or maybe not tag titles. I was gonna say Kazuichi has not held the tag titles. He has not. But he could this season. There's still plenty of seasons left. But. We gotta hit. A clear day win. Four. Kazuichi. Mikan. Kokichi. And we got 12 folk remaining. Chihiro, Junko, freaking Sayaka, Hajime, Nagito. With three KOs. Mahiru. Nagisa, Mew, Samugi, Chisa, Kizakura, and Jin. One of them will win. If Nagito wins, he's bringing everybody with him. It could be a good time. But ladies and gentlemen, it's time to keep on keeping on. It is time to stop this, start this, and proceed. <coughs> Are you prepared? Art thou prepared? Because I am. It is time to go. It is time to see who steps out on top, not Chisa, because Kizakura tosses a knife right into her chest. Nagito questions his sanity. Junko starts to develop feelings for Chihiro. Incoming slow burn? I don't, I don't think Chihiro has it in him to do a slow burn. I think he would just be like, I don't think that's a good idea. Jin, Mew, and Mahiru tell each other their pet peeves. Nagisa fell out of the world. Thinking quickly, Saiga constructs a homemade gun using only some string, a squirrel, and a gun. Hajime also prays to a, to a that he makes it out alive with minimal bloodshed. That didn't work out well for Chisa. We'll see how well it works out for you, bud. <laughs> Sumugi grabs Kokichi by the throat. His corpse? He was just here, but now he's gone. We'll proceed to the feast. The cornucopia is replenished with food, supplies, weapons, and memoirs from the tribute's families. Hajime saw Chisa's fate and made it Samugi's fate. As he throws a knife into Samugi's chest, Sayaka decides not to go to the feast. Jin's also like, no thanks. Mew bleeds out due to untreated injuries. Rest in peace to undisputed Mew. She's been pretty disputed recently. Kizakura, my mans. Kills Nagito. Oh, that's the end of the... That's the end of the light bearer as well. For his supplies. My hero decides not to go to the feast. Neither do Chihiro or Junko as we proceed to day... Four. Oh. As Chihiro looks up... And for some reason, I don't know who's dropping these anvils from the sky. 
because Chihiro was crushed by a falling anvil. Jin rakes the leaves into a neat pile, but Hajime jumps into the pile, making leaves fly everywhere, and Jin is furious! Huh? He's angry! He's peeved, to say the least. Junko, Kizakura, and Mahiru come up with a complicated escape plan, and Saika... Look, I know the beef is over, right? So, um... But, like, it's... How ironic is it that Saika steps on a lethally venomous snake? Just camouflaged by fallen leaves and gets bitten. Um... <laughs> oh, glorious. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I had something caught in my throat. Let's proceed. Let's go onward. Because we lost. Seven. I was going to say, Nagisa, you, you want to show up for a second? Which means, after this terrifying, heartbreaking Claire de Lune. Four. Chisa. Nagisa. Samugi. Mew. Nagito, Chihiro, Saika. Now we can see everybody's statuses. We only needed two. We got seven. Which means for what seems like the um the upteenth time, we've skipped the top ten and went directly to your top five. For your saving grace picks. For some reason, the simulator hates Samurai Woman, <laughs> apparently. But we have Junko with four games. We have Hajime with one, Mahiru with one, Kizakuro with two, and Jin could pull off his first win and a pacifist victory. So I'll have to ask you guys, who will it be? All of my picks perished, and it's truly a shame, but maybe yours didn't. If they did, you can go into the comments. After you've liked, subscribed, belled, go to your comment. Like it? Comment on it? Make a new comment? Make your saving grace picks known. Pick first, second, and third. As I pick it myself. Because those are important. Who would I want to see the most in the finale? Even though the squad is defunct. Not defunct. Seeking new purpose. <laughs> because my beef with Saika is- We know what- My beef is dead, but maybe their beef isn't dead. Hmm. I have to think about that. I can't not root for Junko. That's my homie. We go way back to season one, when we took out Saika together. With Genocide Jack. So I got her for first. Give me... Mahiru for second. Give me Kizakura for third, even though that's my boy. Kinda want him for first, too. But I'm gonna pick for- I'm gonna pick Jinko. Hopefully you've made your picks. I have not much more to say. It's time to find out who's the smartest and the coolest. All of these folks are pretty smart. And all of them are kinda cool. Hmm. That was a good final five, actually, for what the, uh, what the topic was. But I can say that Junko. Hajime, Mahiru, Kizakura, and Jin are all caught in what we like to call in our final five a crisis a fate. Only one can win. But who will it be? Let's see. As we proceed, it won't be Jin. <laughs> Because the start of Night 4, Jin dies of thirst. Mahiru and Hajime tell stories to themselves about each other. Or, yes, about themselves to each other. Kizakura asks Junko to guess their favorite color. Junko responds, a watermelon. So, green or red? It's a good question. Or just a watermelon. We'll proceed to day 5. Hajime goes nyan nya to annoy Kizakura, and Junko sprains her ankle while running away from Mahiru. We only lost one soul. One fallen baby. And a terrible, terrible turnabout. Four. Mr. Kyoko's dad. Jin 
Kiri. Kiri. He couldn't win it for his daughter today. But somebody will win. And one of those people is here right now. Junko, Hajime, Mahiru, or Kizakura. I don't know who it's going to be. But I can tell you that we will find out soon. Because it is still a crisis of fate between these four. Whose fate will be the coolest and smartest to got around the character? <laughs> Let's find out. Let's proceed. Tonight 5. Kizakura starts a fire. Luckily he didn't set himself on fire. Junko tries to stay up all night to catch the mastermind but falls asleep because she already caught her. She is her. In a team building exercise, Hajime and Mahiru tell each other what they hate about one another. I guess... What did they do previously in the previous day? I really don't remember. They they did they had some of them together, but it was it wasn't hostile. So you know what? Oh, they told stories to themselves about each other. Junko catches this bear disease and starts posing dramatically. I would hope that I would think that instead you would just start hoping dramatically, Junko. Mahiru and Kizakura are sitting in a drink. K I S S I N G. As Hajime feels like there's a duck watching him, we lost nobody as we proceed. Two night six. Hajime. Oh my goodness gracious! It's always something. Hajime attempts to climb a tree but falls on Kizakura, killing them both. And Junko shoots an arrow into Mahiru's head. I could not root for her. I could not root for her. You wanna know why? Because You know, I think I caused this. I entered freaking Saika. I I I I felt the beef coming. And look who wins. It's as if it isn't the beef that makes Saika weaker. It is the beef that makes the squad stronger. So maybe it is time to restart the beat. I'll debate that myself. But for now, your winner. From the very first district, District 1, representing the squad, Junko takes the win. And like that, she is now in both finales. Good on her. Good on you, Junko. Let's go. Let's go, Junko. Squad up. Junko takes first with 5 KOs. Mahiru in second with 1. Kizakura in third with 2. Hajime in fourth with 1. Jin in fifth with none. Saika in sixth. Chihiro in seventh. Nagito in eighth with 3. Mew in ninth with 1. And Samugi rounding off the top 10 with no KOs. Oh my boy, my ride or die almost made it to the top 10. Nagisa, you're gonna get yourself one. I feel it. I feel like this is your season again. I think you're gonna come back for it. But that's everyone. From 1 to 30, Seiko, who I low-key expected to do well, because I was like, Seiko's a, always a sleeper pick. She was just asleep today, finishing last. We'll proceed. It all started with Seiko. Kori and Junko getting into a fight, and Junko was the one who took her out. So she started by taking out Seiko and finished by taking out Mahiru. What a game she had. That's right. Junko started this day with a kill, started this way, uh, this day with a kill. Junko, and then she ended this day with- She's the one who got rid of Tengen for you guys. Junko! We respect Junko. That's how we feel. We feel Junko under the- I'm um, Junko! From the bottom of my heart, thank you for over a year ago. When the squad first formed, I never thought I'd be so proud of it. Never thought the beef would end. And it might not be over after Junko took this win. After Junko took this win. After I, you know, kind of talked a little dirty about Saika. Junko takes the win. You guys see a correlation here? Like maybe RNG is telling me to restart. It's been, it's, it's been like hinting at me. RNG is like, restart it, restart it. Killing boss a couple times. It's like, restart it! Saika winning, it's like, restart it! Yeah, it's just, I'm, I'm not gonna do it yet. But let me tell you, I'm this close. 
will proceed. Junko with 5, Makoto with 3, Nagito with 3, Kizukura with 2, Hajime, Kazuichi, Mahiru, Mew, and Nagisa all with 1. And there's the lot. From 1 to 30. That's it. Junko is the smartest and the coolest. I could have told you that from the get-go, if I'm being completely honest. We'll go back to the reaping. That's the lot. I, I hope we'll go back to the reaping. And I hope the website didn't just do anything weird. Okay, there we go. That's it. And by the... The nine of spades that is chilling here on this whiteboard, I say to you, that is all she wrote. Tomorrow. We're gonna do... Tomorrow's an episode for the tag teams, but it's kind of a random episode. Because it's full, I gave everyone an item that I don't think that we've given everyone before. We might have done it before. But there's like a like a couple select items that we have just not had a full-on episode of. But this time we will. So ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned for that. But once again, congratulations to Junko. Bring up the singles bracket. With Samugi and Junko, it's a pair of masterminds. In fact... All three of them, their tag team, Junko, Monica, and Samugi, have made it into the singles bracket. And because of Saika, they made it into the tag team bracket. So they could have one heck of a seasonal sweep if they are lucky come December. That's exciting. They're a group to watch. Until then, ladies and gentlemen, you're not a state savior taking off. Toon Link Dave, you're the horizon. Until tomorrow, toodaloo, Flycourt, thanks for watching. <laughs>